Amid the Israel-Hamas conflict, Russia and China are using the situation to shift the focus and pressure the United States. The US has historically been a key supporter of Israel, but the ongoing conflict has led to criticism and calls for action. China and Russia have seized the opportunity to criticize the US and position themselves as influential players in the Middle East. While the US has urged China to play a more significant role, Beijing sees the crisis as a chance to score diplomatic points and advance its interests in the region, especially regarding Taiwan and allegations of human rights abuses. Russia, preoccupied with Ukraine, benefits from diverting global attention. The situation highlights the complex dynamics and geopolitical maneuvering surrounding the Middle East conflict. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres called for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza, alleging violations of international law and expressing deep concern over the suffering of civilians. Israel, angered by the UN chief's comments, rejected the ties of violence to occupation and imposed a blockade on Gaza. Israel's ambassador to the UN called on Guterres to resign, accusing him of understanding terrorism. The US, backed by Israel, rejected a draft resolution last week and proposed a new resolution that defends the right to self-defense but does not call for a full ceasefire. Russia and Egypt opposed the new draft. The Israel Defense Forces, IDF, suggested that the United Nations ask Hamas for fuel supplies after the UN agency providing aid to Palestinian civilians in Gaza, known as UNRWA, warned it would have to halt operations if no fuel was delivered. The IDF claimed that Hamas militants have over 500,000 liters of fuel in tanks inside Gaza and told the UN to ask Hamas for it. While there have been some limited deliveries of food, water, and medicine, no fuel has been allowed in. The US is leading negotiations to create a sustained aid delivery mechanism for Gaza, but there are concerns about the diversion of fuel by Hamas. The United States is preparing evacuation plans for up to 600,000 Americans in Israel amid rising tensions and the possibility of a full-scale ground war in the region. The Biden administration has developed contingency plans for a major exodus of American citizens, with a full-scale airlift seen as a worst-case scenario. The State Department estimates that around 600,000 Americans are in Israel, although many hold dual nationality. The UK and other Western nations are also in contact with their nationals in the region and have advised against travel to Israel and Gaza. Both the US and the UK have urged groups sympathetic to Hamas in the region not to launch further attacks on Israel, aiming to prevent an escalation of the conflict. The potential evacuation of US and UK nationals could involve the use of military resources including U.S. Navy ships stationed in the eastern Mediterranean. The U.K. has previously used military aircraft for evacuations from conflict zones, such as the airlift from Kabul following the collapse of the Afghan government in 2021. Elon Musk, the tech billionaire, expressed concerns about the potential for World War III due to the conflicts in Ukraine and Gaza. Musk emphasized the need to prioritize avoiding a global conflict and called for efforts to restore normal relations with Russia. He previously proposed a solution to end the Ukraine war, which faced criticism from Ukrainian officials. Musk also commented on the conflict between Israel and Hamas. Warning that the US might face challenges if an alliance formed between Russia, China, and Iran. He highlighted the importance of economic power in warfare, emphasizing industrial output as a key factor. Musk's talk took place on his social media platform, X, and included discussions with tech entrepreneur David Sachs and presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. U.S. troops in the Middle East have faced 14 attacks in the past week, involving one-way drones and rockets, resulting in 24 injuries. The attacks occurred in Iraq and Syria, with Iran proxy forces suspected to be behind them. While no evidence currently points to Iran's leaders ordering the attacks, the incidents raise concerns about regional tensions. Specific details include a rocket fired at Al-Assad Air Base in Iraq, interception without casualties, an attack on Al-Harar Air Base with no reported injuries, and an attack on Al-Tanf garrison in Syria causing injuries to 20 U.S. service members. The situation is being closely monitored by the Pentagon. Australia has deployed additional military aircraft and a significant number of defense personnel to the Middle East to support its citizens in case the conflict between Israel and Hamas intensifies. The move follows a deadly cross-border attack by Iran-backed Hamas and aims to ensure the safety of Australians in the region. The deployment includes a Boeing C-17 aircraft and an air refueler plane, bringing the total to three.
The Australian government has been conducting repatriation flights for citizens stranded in Israel and is making efforts to rescue Australians from the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. Lebanese Prime Minister Najib Mikadi visited the country's southern border with Israel to assess the situation and prevent the Israel-Hamas conflict from spreading into Lebanon. This visit followed Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's earlier visit to the same border. The concern arises as the Lebanese-based militant group Hezbollah has fired rockets into Israel, raising fears of a broader war. Hezbollah, with its significant military capabilities, is considered a more potent adversary than Hamas. The Lebanese government aims to navigate the delicate situation and prevent further escalation. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken expressed his intention to collaborate with China's top diplomat, Wang Yi, to prevent the Middle East conflict from spreading. Blinken called on the UN Security Council to assist in containing the conflict, emphasizing the responsibility of permanent members, and warned Iran and its proxies against opening more fronts. The upcoming meeting between Blinken and Wang in Washington is seen as an opportunity for the U.S. to engage China in preventing further escalation in the Middle East. While both countries have shared concerns, questions remain about China's willingness and actual leverage in influencing the situation. In the latest development, Palestinian officials reported the highest number of deaths in a single day since the Israel-Hamas conflict began on October 7. In the past 24 hours, 704 people, including 305 children, were killed, bringing the total death toll to 5,791. The Palestinian Ministry of Health announced the collapse of hospitals in the Gaza Strip, stating that open doors don't guarantee adequate services due to the overwhelming number of wounded individuals. The Israel Defense Forces, IDF, claimed to have struck more than 400 positions in Gaza, targeting Hamas militants with artillery, tanks, and helicopters. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu referred to the strikes as the hardest blow in Gaza in a single day and mentioned the operation entering its next phase. Additionally, IDF said it struck Hezbollah infrastructure in Lebanon, including a military compound, post, and observation post, following rocket and missile attacks in northern Israeli communities. The Israeli military is offering rewards to Palestinians who provide information on hostages held by Hamas in Gaza. The appeal emphasizes complete confidentiality and financial incentives, urging individuals to contribute valuable and verified details about hostages. Hamas militants took over 200 hostages during the initial attacks on Israel on October 7, with some released as negotiations continue. The call for public assistance coincides with Israel's contemplation of a potential ground invasion into Gaza. The U.S. has reportedly advised Israel to delay the invasion, believing it could aid the release of hostages. However, Israeli officials have not provided a specific timetable for a ground invasion. While warnings from U.S. lawmakers and humanitarian groups suggest such an action could worsen conditions in Gaza. The recent escalation includes over 400 Israeli airstrikes on Gaza, targeting Hamas leadership and military sites but resulting in an increasing number of civilian casualties. The Israel Defense Forces, IDF, spokesperson, Doran Spielman, described Hamas's release of hostages as psychological warfare, comparing it to tactics used by Nazi propagandist Joseph Goebbels. Spielman asserted that Hamas engages in propaganda, referencing videos that the IDF considers reminiscent of Nazi propaganda. The comments follow the recent releases of hostages by Hamas, with two elderly women released on Monday as part of international negotiations. Spielman emphasized the importance of defeating Hamas to prevent future hostage situations. Hostage negotiations continue amid ongoing conflict between Hamas and Israel, with the IDF conducting airstrikes and implementing restrictions on Gaza supplies. Over 5,700 Palestinians in Gaza have been reported killed, and concerns about an impending ground invasion persist. The United States has expressed support for Israel's response to the attacks, drawing parallels to the U.S. war on terror after the 9-11 attacks. President Biden announced a U.S.-brokered deal for limited aid to enter Gaza, addressing the humanitarian crisis. The information provided indicates that the Tunisian Parliament's Freedoms Committee has approved a draft law criminalizing the normalization of relations with Israel. The draft includes seven chapters with penalties, including a potential life imprisonment sentence. The move comes amid ongoing protests in Tunisia in solidarity with Palestinians. And the draft law targets various forms of interaction, including trade, commercial, cultural activities, services, and military or intelligence communication with Israel.
Tunisia currently does not have diplomatic ties with Israel. The information suggests that U.S. intelligence officials have concluded, with high confidence, that Israel was not behind an explosion at a hospital in Gaza City last week. The explosion killed as many as 300 people. Israel's credit outlook was cut to negative by SP Global ratings due to concerns that the war with Hamas could have a more pronounced effect on the country's economy. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres called for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. Leading to heated exchanges, and Israel's ambassador to the UN demanded Guterres's resignation. President Joe Biden expressed concerns about the slow pace of humanitarian aid entering Gaza. The Pentagon is sending Iron Dome batteries to Israel, and the US is actively working on evacuation plans for Americans from the wider Middle East if the conflict escalates.